believe they're not making vinyl anymore? It's weird, isn't it? That is weird. Bobby said my album will never, ever be on vinyl. Oh, Bobby says. Hey, welcome to Sean Spins. This is episode 31, and I'm your host, Sean. And I hope everyone is safe and well, and I hope everyone is safe in the Ukraine. And those wanting to leave the Ukraine, I hope every one of them is able to leave safely. It's been a while I've been working on this episode and having issues with the weather. It's just been very dark and rainy and hard to film. What? Producers yelling, what? Like an angel on your shoulder, team. And <clears throat> if you ever get hurt and you feel that you're going down, this little angel is going to whisper in your ear. He's going to say, get up, you son of a bitch. Mickey loves you. I'm just saying, I, I think we might have to break down and get like a little light. When it's dark and raining and snowing, the camera will not focus on the computer. I, I think it will help. Well, you can wish in one hand and crap in the other and see which gets filled first. Thanks for the help. Well, what are we doing today? Seems like we're doing canned heat. Episode 31, let's start the show. Episode 31 of Sean Spins is Canned Heat's second album, Boogie with Canned Heat, January of 1968. I'm going to talk a little bit about the band, breakdown of the album, and go a little bit into the performance at Woodstock, and particularly one song from the performance from the second album. Now, when you're talking about Canned Heat, you have to talk about the influence of blues and Delta blues played on the band I mean, heavily. The name of the band comes from a Tommy Johnson song. Floyd Jones, Muddy Waters. And you still might be saying, Sean, was the band that heavily influenced by Delta blues and blues? Take a listen of Henry Thomas. Yeah, that's, that's not can he playing that song. That's Henry Thomas a long time before. You know, now one of the things I do like about Can He, because sometimes I do not like bands that just cover other music. Um, I'd rather listen to the original. Now, a lot of their songs are their songs, yet when they do cover songs, you can really feel the emotion and love that Alan Wilson has for the blues and puts all his heart and soul into the music. It's not just someone covering the song because they thought it was cool or it might sell a few albums. Like This is a person that really loved the blues and helped get a lot of the originators of the blues back into the spotlight in the 1960s. Let's get a little bit into the band, and then we'll get into the record in Woodstock. Let's start it. Now, Can Heat was, during the second album, going into Woodstock. The members consisted of Henry on guitar from Mothers of Invention, eventually leaving, being replaced by Harvey a week before Woodstock. Can you imagine that, a week before Woodstock? Alan, Blind Al Wilson, on guitar, vocals, and other instruments. Bob the Bear, vocals. Larry on bass. Adolfo on drums. Now, on the second album, you also have Dr. John and Sonny Land Slim. Let's break down the album. Let's take out my copy here. I absolutely love the cover. The cover reminds me of Neil Adams' art and also older science fiction covers. For the life of me, I apologize. I cannot read the artist that did the work. As much as I try my eyesight, I cannot see it. Just amazing portraits of the band that have this kind of futuristic feel to it. Came out January 1968, as I said earlier. Love the back cover too. The collage is wonderful with the band members and the products and the titles of the song. It's great. It is on Liberty and Stereo. Good album. Let's talk about 
some of the songs, some of my favorites. And I will say I have one complaint about this album. One complaint, which is the second track, My Crime. Now, the first album had a lot of covers on it. This album doesn't have as many, yet My Crime really upsets me. It is clearly a Willie Dixon musical track, you know, Muddy Waters, yet it is listed as Can Heat. Now, I know the vocals and the lyrics and the story is different. It's a story about what happened to the band when they were on tour, yet musically, that is a Willie Dixon song. Like, I do not know why it's not credited as a Willie Dixon musically originated song. Like, the riff, the music is exactly from Willie Dixon, and then Muddy Waters used it, and uh, that always gets me. Turpentine Moan is a beautiful song. Love that song. Whiskey Headed Woman, beautiful song. Now, that song has the bear talking in the beginning, and I always crack up about that because it reminds me of like an old Beach Boy song when the band's talking to the listeners like, hey, everybody out there, and I always crack up. When you go to side two, it's got Amphetamine, Amphetamine Annie, and it tells a cautionary story of, of what can happen with substances and you know to stay away from them. And sadly, you know, some of the band members didn't listen to their own advice, which is sad to me. An Owl Song, which is an Alan Wilson song, which is great. The harmonica is great. One of my favorite songs comes next, Marie Laval. That's a song from Henry. Wonderful song. There's no lyrics in it, yet it's great. The lead guitar is great. The lead guitar at the end of side A, too, is, is also just great. Well, actually, they call side A front, and the other side B, they call it back. My other favorite song from the album is Fried Hockey Boogie. I love that song. It's it's cool how the bear introduces each member like one at a time, and they play a little bit. For the life of me, I cannot figure out the distortion or fuzz. I'm going to say it's a fuzz pedal that Henry is using. I'm thinking I'm leaning more towards a Gibson uh, fuzz box. Um, I can't tell. I do not think it's a fuzz face pedal. I think it's more of a Gibson pedal. I, mean, I can't tell. Now, the song that most people from like greatest hits and stuff would know is from side A or the front, which is track number three on the road again, which is an amazing song. And it comes from a couple older blues songs with Alan Wilson adding to it and putting a lot of his heart and soul and emotion into it. And as I said earlier, you know, Alan Wilson really puts his all into the music and into the blues. And one can tell that Alan, blind Alan Wilson, really loves the blues. Now, for me, that track, I really love it at the Woodstock performance. And, you know, really quick, though, I want to say it's starting to get dark again because it's going to looks like it's going to rain or maybe snow again. We could really use that light. Well, you can wish in one hand and crap in the other and see which gets filled first. Thanks again for your help. <sighs> now, the song sounds a little different at Woodstock, the intro. I think it's amazing. Did not end up in the movie, yet years and years ago, my parents bought me a version of the movie that had like two hours of extra footage, and that was part of it, and it was shocking to hear. It just has a different feel to it. Um, it's great. Oh, dad, cry. I'm on the road again. Well, I'm so tired of crying, but I'm out on the road again. Well, I ain't got no woman, just to call my special friend. Amazing. 
the intro is different. It's just it's just a lot of passion, and um, you know, sadly, we lost uh, Alan Wilson, and I can't imagine what the future had in store for him. You know, such a caring, uh, beautiful soul, and beautiful music. Now, one of the things that gets me about his performance is, first of all, that that guitar is so iconic. Yet, the way he plays the guitar is just, it's very odd. And I've been playing guitar for most of my life, yet I've never seen or heard anyone play guitar uh, like Alan Blind Al Wilson. And, uh, Let's break it down a little more. Now, here are some of the guitar players from Woodstock. You know, some of the big inspirations uh, for me. Um, we have Leslie West from Mountain playing a very similar guitar to Alan Wilson. And I know some individuals might go, well, maybe it's the guitar he's playing. Very similar guitar that Leslie West is playing in Mountain. Carlos Santana, also playing a very similar guitar. It's an SG, but it's very similar pickups, one would say. Amazing performance from Santana. We have Jimi Hendrix. You know, Jimi Hendrix, amazing. Uh, growing up, my teacher in college was at Woodstock and did not get to see or hear Hendrix. Went home early. Did not stay for that last morning that Hendrix ended up playing. Johnny Winter, amazing Richie Havens, amazing. Yeah, 10 Years After with Alvin Lee, amazing. You know, another 10 Years After, Leo playing bass in 10 Years After, <laughs> spectacular. Yet, most of these guitar players, I can relate to how they're playing guitar, how they're using a guitar pick, how their hands are playing the frets, the strings, how they're holding down chords and notes and things like that. Now, Jimi Hendrix and Richie Havens is a little bit more complicated. You know, Jimi Hendrix is able to play bass, rhythm, and lead with his hand on his fretting hand, and very complicated, yet I still somewhat understand it. Richie Havens is also doing something very similar, how he's using his thumb to fret strings down, and it's complicated, yet I still somewhat understand it. However, Alan Wilson, the way he's playing... The strings, not using a pick, using his fingers. Now, I played with my fingers before, and there's other people that use picks on their fingers to pick out the notes, yet he's doing something completely different. It's almost like it's coming from another planet, yet the sound is amazing, and he's putting all his emotion, soul, and love into it. I'm telling you, it's amazing. Different style, yet a lot of passion and soul. Reminds me of a little bit of Johnny Ramone playing. You know, Johnny Ramone uses a guitar pick, yet only does downstrokes on the strings. You know, Alan Blind Alan Wilson, similar to a bass player, using two strings to play the notes, yet using, seems like, three or four fingers. A lot of soul. You know, what else can I say about the album? It's great. I feel as though Canned Heat is not as known as a lot of the bands from that time. Yet they are a great band. And I will say this, they are a great blues band.
I already mentioned a lot of the tracks I think are great. You know, Henry's lead guitar playing on multiple tracks is amazing. Um, their cover, of Whiskey Headed Woman, is great. Henry's song, I think, is still probably one of my favorites, that Marie Laval. An Owl song is great. The last song's one of my favorites, you know, that Fried Hockey Boogie. And basically, that's taking On the Road Again and extending the musical track from their version of On the Road Again and just playing that for like 10 minutes and each person soloing. And it's wonderful. And um, it's sad to see what happened to the band with addiction and, um, you know, death from addiction. And I say it all the time on the channel. If you struggle with addiction and substances, there's help. And, um, you know, and there is a better way to live. I say that all the time. And I really wonder uh, what could have came of the band. And uh, I could see this band really taking off. You know, in the 1980s, there was another rise of blues music. You know, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan really being at the forefront of that. And a lot of musicians came back into the spotlight. And... I can imagine they would have been there, and I could see and hear. I can imagine Blind Allen, Blind Owl, excuse me. I can imagine a performance, him, Albert King, and Steve Ray Vaughan. That would have been amazing. Well, till next time. I hope everybody's safe and well, and uh, take care and be nice to each other. Thanks for your help, Dad, and the new producer you sent.